Super, thanks so much. Uh, I'm, I'm Deborah Lafer from School of Engineering at NYU and my collaborator on this project is Tom Kirshner from the School of Global Public Health. And we got one of the very first rapids and we sent out a big team of undergraduate and graduate students to medical facilities out in the New York area. So what was the goal? The goal was to try to understand at a really hyper level, what were people doing? Things that you couldn't pick up from closed circuit television, you couldn't uh, pick up from just looking at people's cell phones, things like, what was the gender of this person? What did they touch? Were they wearing PPE? So we had uh, 16 human observers and we were out there at the peak of the spring outbreak. So we had our first observer on the ground on March 23rd and the last one on May 19th. As you can imagine, it was a pretty stressful, crazy time. So our students got in time when they could. They were each assigned to a specific hospital or urgent care in an area which they could walk to. We tried to select um, students based on the fact that there was nobody else working in their area. So you can see on the right-hand side, we had three facilities up in the Bronx, a cluster of them in Manhattan, um, here in Brooklyn, and then here out in Queens. So we tried to get a kind of a, a good distribution. The students were told to go out anytime they could, up to 20 hours a week. Uh, ultimately, they collected over 5,000 records of over 6,000 individuals. So what were they doing? They're standing on street corners in front of e mostly ER um, entrances or the main urgent care entrances. And you can see here, uh, there's a food cart, uh, there's lots of things to touch. So this is where the student was standing. Uh, here we're out at Elmhurst, or see this is a Mount Sinai in Lower Manhattan, and this is Elmhurst out in Queens, one of the most impacted sites. Uh, and the students were asked to take a smartphone and to basically randomly select somebody as they came out of one of these facilities to stay across the street from them, not to talk to them, not to touch them, not to photograph them, not to video, and to just note what they were and who, you know, where they were going. So what did that look like? So um, here we have a record. They came out of this area. They used a phone. It has the time uh, that they did certain things. They entered a certain facility here. They then, uh, they, they note they were wearing a mask. They interacted with a passerby's dog uh, and they tried to enter the park, but the gates were closed. Um, here's another one female uh, with a mask and gloves came out, entered the Walgreens, came back out. Students were asked to try to monitor the person for up to 20 minutes, up to a mile in distance, or until they couldn't see them anymore. Many of them, if they went into a, a small store, they felt they were gonna come right back out. And so we have that return record as well. Um, this was the data set, as you can see, it was fairly uh, uneven. In one case, we had a facility that was closed. So a, a student moved over to this facility. So we've kind of doubled the amount. Um, they're color coded by borough, blue for Bro Brooklyn. Here we've got uh, green for Manhattan and then purple for Queens and yellow for the Bronx. This data set was released publicly in September. Uh, and is available both as coded uh, in a CSV file, individual um, GIS files, and a grouped uh, shape file for about 20% of that data. We're about to upload another 20% of that data into a single shape file as well. And we can start to see some quite fascinating things. So here, this was, um, we're looking at mask usage. So about 48% of the records uh, note whether they're wearing PPE. And we can see that women wore masks more than men. And then here, when the governor implemented the mask mandate, we see both greater compliance, but particularly of the men, we really see a, a much more significant um, PPE usage. We can see some other things longitudinally. Uh, here, this is just at one facility. Uh, over the time, Increasingly, people just stop touching things in the built environment. Here in black, we see the COVID hospitalization rate. Uh, and even as it stopped to drop, people started to become more and more cautious in general. 
particularly about touching things in the environment. That's this yellow line. But what we notice is in terms of touching themselves, uh, touching other people, that's the line in blue, uh, and touching personal objects, it's much less clear. A lot of times these people are obviously not thinking about these things as outside themselves. So they're coming out of these high-risk medical facilities where COVID is just rampant. And the first thing they're doing about 15% of them is taking their phone out of their purse, out of their pocket and sticking it against their face. Um, so uh, by having it all into a giant, ultimately into a GIS system, we can start to look at some hotspot activity, both in terms of individual routes and some larger zones. So I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity to present some of these preliminary results. Thanks so much.